Okay, now all you young fellows that are out there just now getting started in the, in the industry, this is a classic example of the kind of work that you do not want to be the one responsible for producing. Now, this system was installed back whenever the house was brand new, so it's you know 30 years old, 25, 30 years old or so. And uh, take a look. There's absolutely no fitting here at all. It was just duct tape. You see the dried duct tape just fall off, fell off, you know, five years after it was put on there. And there's absolutely no connection to the oval wall stacking up above. And we've got just a horrible uh, six inch tap into this little rectangular box that doesn't fit at all. It's just literally crammed into the opening. And it's just, uh, just a total misshapen, terrible looking piece of whatever you want to call it. Now, I do not want you to grow up to be the guy that does this kind of work. This is obviously done by a, somebody that wasn't real versed in sheet metal work, and he was more than likely unsupervised on top of that. Now, this is only one of two. There's the other one over here that I've already taken out, and I'm in the process of remedying that situation uh, right now. But I'm going to show you what it is, what this looked like. Here's what I just took out of that area that I just showed you. Now, this somebody just bent it by hand around the floor. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with hand making pieces of metal on the job, but you want to at least m make an attempt at making something that's going to fit or something that's going to have weight be decent. You don't just slam something together and just stick it up there and then hope for the best uh, because the end result is the end user, the people that actually are paying for the system to go in and have to pay to to use the system to heat their house or to cool their house are the one that's going to kind of pay the price for something that's done improperly. The point of the story, guys, is I do not want you to grow up to be the guy that does this kind of uh, this kind of stuff. Now, I don't. I make it a point not to run down or bash other people's work. I'm not coming clean on who the installing contractor was, even though I know for a fact who the installing contractor was. It's not my place to, to call them out or anything. I just want the young fellas that are watching my videos or the young fellows or, or even older fellows that are just getting into sheet metal to just kind of observe what not to do and please don't be the guy that that's guilty of putting in something like this this has been a mess and i'm in there having a devil of a time cleaning it all up and putting in everything proper rant over this is what i'm going back in with right here Hey, one thing you got to consider, the more complicated the system becomes, you have to ask yourself, how am I going to control without uh, zone dampers and things like that, uh, electrified zone dampers that operate off of individual zone thermostats? How am I going to control or adjust the amount of air getting into the, each and individual registers? Um, well, the answer to that is just simple old-fashioned uh, quadrant quadrant damper set that goes into your 6-inch branch ducts as they come off of your pressurized trunk system. So essentially what happens is your, your blower creates what's called duct static or static pressure inside a duct. Look at it as though it's air inside of a balloon wanting to get out. It's exactly what air is doing inside your pressurized duct system. Air is going to follow the path of least resistance. So the air has to blow to the end of the duct, hit the end of the duct, and build up that static pressure. You, you see what I mean? In a reverse fashion. Uh, now this happens instantaneously, but still the air has to go to the end of the duct to create the static. If you have registers that are at or near the end of the duct line and you don't have a means to throttle that airflow out of those registers or those branch ducts out, then those are going to get a tremendous amount of airflow, whereas the other ones up here are simply going to have a great percentage of the air just go right past them. So you want to have volume damper control uh, on all of your branches so that you can throttle back and maintain static pressure all the way through your trunk to get equal amounts of air or the quantity of air you need out of the individual registers or branch ducts to satisfy the room's requirement. Every one of those rooms are going to be different. Even cookie cutter houses, the rooms are still different. Uh, the airflow is going to be different. But with volume dampers, you can you can bring those into under control and you can get a fairly even heating or cooling system. Let's go down here and take a look and see what one of these looks like inside the uh, the first fitting coming off of the trunk line. Here's where the uh, the takeoff comes right off the top of the trunk line and you can see the six inch run going to the right that's heading over to the register and you can see the little handle hanging down right there. I typically bend those little handles in a convenient little curve like that so you can stick your finger on it and give it a pull in order to make adjustments to it. 
Now, obviously, there's never going to be 100% shut off unless you have a motorized damper that actually has a gasketed damper inside. But this is your hand operated volume control damper right here. So, with it in the totally closed position, you're still going to get just a little bit of leakage all the way around the perimeter. I can't, I can't get the camera in there to see, but here you can see up at the top right hand side, you can see about a quarter of an inch. Uh, that's only on about half of it because the damper never uh, totally centers up. But you can adjust it like this or, or whatever to get the required amount you need for your particular room. This particular one here happens to go into a half bath. So it's going to stay just about completely closed or maybe just a slight tweak because there's no need to have a tremendous amount of air in the heating mode or the cooling mode for a small bathroom. Here it is from the outside and that's typically uh, in the closed condition or closed position and that's what you're going to uh, almost always see if you have the branch duct dampers. Now when you're installing these branch dampers you have your option to stop by the supply house and pick up the plasma cut pre-made ones. In the old days they weren't plasma cut they were used uh, circle shears what they had used to make these. Uh, I made a few, <laughs> a few thousand of them myself with a circle shear and also by hand but nowadays they're plasma cut. But what you do is go ahead and set your dividers for about a five and three quarter inch uh, five and three quarter inch circle and go ahead and cut your five and three quarter inch circle out and you use these little damper kits that you buy at the supply house. If you look a little close, this is your handle that sticks on the outside of the, the branch duct but I'll go ahead and cut a, a round and I'll show you how that assembles. Let's set your calipers at about two and seven eighths inches. Two and seven eighths inches give you about five and three quarter or thereabouts. Grab a piece of scrap metal preferably a heavier gauge like this is uh, this in particular is a 24 gauge and the reason you want that heavier gauge metal is you want it to not flex. If you use a right light gauge metal, the air pressure inside that duct will make this flex back and forth and you could end up with a, a thump, 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 a little rattle in your ductwork. So you use the heavier gauge, it, does, it has a tendency to not flex. It'll remain stiff under that excess pressure. Now what I like to do is take and just shave a little bit of a flat spot off of the edge right there. See we got a little bit of a flat spot right there. Now we're going to go ahead and take this. They're a little trickier on the thicker metal but just kind of loosen up a little bit and make that uh, the little spring loose. Slide it in here and take it all the way up to the hilt just like I did right there. And we're going to set this on the floor or on a piece of block of steel or whatever and we're going to drive this right through the piece of metal. Here I got the wall right here. I just do it right, do it right here on the wall. Driving that right through just like that on the against the uh, concrete pushes it through the back side of your damper and holds everything secure. Now there's your quadrant damper for a six inch pipe and it's roughly five and three quarter inch diameter. Matter of fact it's precisely five and three quarter inches diameter. That way you'll get just a little bit of leakage through whenever you're totally in the closed position. And this is Tractor Man 44 and I'm out of here guys.